Does anyone know some different types of numbers that we have? Like, rational. Beautiful. We've got rational numbers. What are some other types of numbers that we know? There are prime numbers, great, negative. I'll start making a list. We prime, negative. Irrational, beautiful. Composite, excellent. Integers. I was looking for that one. Integers. Positive imaginary. Any others I'm looking for? Rational, prime, negative, irrational, integers. Ooh, there is a couple I'm looking for. Whole numbers. Yes! Whole numbers. That's what I was looking for. Natural. Awesome. This is a great list, my dears. All right, there's a couple that we are going to be focusing on today, okay? And we're going to be talking about how they work together and how to tell the difference between them. And honestly, a lot of these words that we're just going to be going over today are words that we'll find helpful. Um, honestly, for the most part, when you have to take tests, right? And if you have to take standards tests... Um, because they'll ask you to do something with very specific types of numbers. So we'll talk a little bit about those. We'll get a base of what we're talking about. And honestly, it's going to be a lot of working today with what is some of the language that we use, right? All right, let's do this. So I'm just going to mark off some ones that we're going to start to talk about. And then we're going to talk about kind of where they lie together. All right, so... We'll talk about natural numbers. Positive and negative, those guys are going to come into play as well today. But the ones we'll start out talking about, we'll talk about whole numbers. We'll talk about imaginary. Um, prime, that word will get thrown around, but it's not going to be a big focus today. We'll be talking about irrational and rational. Yeah, honestly, most of these will get talked about today. But the main words we're going to focus on defining are the ones that I've starred. I think you can definitely watch this unironically for fun. I've actually had people tell me that, um, some artists tell me that they like to have this on in the background while they do their art. And I think that's kind of cool. I think that's kind of cool. So whatever you're here, whether it's for background noise, um, whether it's for learning something new, refreshing something old, or just because you want to watch. I'm happy to have you here. All right. So I'm going to erase this, and then we're going to start to talk about how some of these guys play together, okay? Because some of these numbers... Did I mark integers? Oh, yeah, we'll be talking about integers, too. I missed that guy. Some of these have numbers in common, and it's kind of interesting. You're vibing at work. I love that, hon. <gasps> Hi, friend. All right. So I'm going to erase this, and then we'll talk about how some of these start to play together, okay? They're kind of like, you can kind of think of these words almost. I like to think of them as, like, exclusive groups. And not all of the numbers can get into every group. I'm not sure what you don't understand, honey. We haven't even gotten started. Deep breath. I think you're just panicking. And I see this a lot in class. Because as some people um, on here tend to forget, I am actually a math teacher. 
That's what I do on my day-to-day job. Um, and it's, it's okay. The biggest problem that you can make for yourself in math is panicking. We, we, we've gotten it in our heads that it's something that only in a weak group can do, but that's not true. Everyone learns in their own time and their own pace. And that's why I like to make these so you can go back as many times as possible. Okay? You've got this. I believe in you. Even if you don't get it today, you might get it tomorrow or the next day or the day after that. That's okay. And as someone with dyslexia, it's okay to get things in your own time. It's okay to have to find weird ways around them. Okay? But thank you for being here. Thank you for hanging out with me. And thank you for, if anything, letting it wash over you. Because that'll make you notice it a lot better the next time you see it. I write. I wish I could say that was an act for present Mike, but this is just how I am in the classroom. Anywho. Some of my students love it. Some of them hate it. But they deal. All right, I'm going to write out how we can classify these numbers in several ways, okay? So maybe one will speak to you and one won't, okay? And that's okay. But I'm going to be writing them out in several different ways to talk about them, okay? Okay. All right, we're just going to start listing some of these guys off and giving examples of different numbers that work with them, okay? And then we're going to reorganize them into a different kind of charty thing. Again, part of this might speak to you, part of it might not. The reason for me showing you it in several different ways is all of our brains work different and I want to try and hit as many people as possible, okay? All right, so let's start with, let's start with my natural numbers. One of the most exclusive groups. I'm blanking on how to spell natural after I just talked about dyslexia. How do I spell natural? Natch, natch. Can someone help me out here? How do I spell natural? Thank you, natural. Oh, we help each other here. We help each other here. I love it. (laughs) Natural, natural. Yeah. All right. Who does anyone want to take a guess at what the natural numbers are? What are my natural numbers? As I slowly raise it. Right? One. I like that we're skipping around on that. That's kind of fun. Awesome. Awesome. These are great examples, my dears. Okay. Beautiful. Yes, that's a great way to define it. Yes, that's a great way to define it. Someone said over zero. And kind of, oh, oh, that was really cute. Thank you. (laughs) Oh, I'm good. Natural numbers, but I want to add to that over zero. It's, It's going to be whole numbers over zero. Okay? Okay. So, like, a natural number would be, like, one, two, three, four, five, and then on and on forever and ever, okay? But not zero, not zero, okay? Not zero, it's not zero. Natural numbers are one, two, three, four. And the way that I like to think about natural numbers is I like to think back to how we may have made up numbers, right? We made up numbers because we needed to count stuff. And usually, great, you're asking why not zero and I love it. I love it, let's talk about it. So the reason why we don't count zero as a natural numbers is because natural numbers are those things that I like to think of as naturally occurring, right? Like we, back in the day, which was a Wednesday, we, it's a bad joke, 
we um, would look at things and go, well, I have stuff now and I need to count it. Or I have a city and I got to count how many people are here, right? And I wouldn't count a half a person. That doesn't make no sense. There aren't half of people. Um, so like it'd be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And I wouldn't bother to try and count something that wasn't there. I wouldn't bother to count something naturally. This is just how I remember it. That's not there. So I wouldn't ever try and use the number zero to be like, guess what? I've got zero of these things. Why? Because I don't need to count it if there's nothing there. That's how I like to think of it. So zero is not something that like, think of it as like, there's an absence. Zero is the absence of something. So we just, we don't count it. Naturally, we don't count it. So natural numbers are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, ever, forever, and ever, and ever. That's it. Fun fact about the zero, right? Because then it's like, well, why did we come up with zero then if we're not naturally counting it, right? The reason, the first, this is a fun fact, the first recorded um, use of the number zero was actually by the Mayans. So they were the first people to ever use zero. They are the, like, it happened then around the world as time went on, but the Mayans were the first recorded group of people that used it, that thought up, maybe we should count that there's nothing. And that sounds crazy, but it led to some really cool mathematics and us being able to do so much more. So the group that we call that holds on to that zero is our whole numbers. Our whole numbers are going to include zero. I just think that's so freaking neat. And that's literally the difference. That's it. And honestly, I get those confused all the time as well. But whole includes zero. I'll take, I'll give you a moment. I know some people like to write these down, okay? All right, so here we go. Let's talk about another thing. The next one we're gonna talk about is our integers. And integers are honestly probably the numbers you deal with in math class the most. You've dealt with integers for so, so long. So does anyone wanna take a guess at what integers are? Zero and lower are negative. Yes, zero and lower are negative. Awesome, I love that, the plus or the minus. That's okay, you can still write, we're just talking. I'll have time. Yes, it includes the negatives. It includes the negatives. Just taking a moment to block some people who aren't being too nice. We don't need that. Awesome, beautiful, beautiful, my dears. All right, so let's write that down. Integers are just all of the, like, I like to think of them as like all the like neat numbers that don't have decimals involved at all. There's no decimals, they have no decimals. So my integers are like my negative three it goes all the way this way too so i'll write some dot dot dots over here if you can see them there's dot dot dots because it continues in that direction as well whereas these guys start here and go that way this guy can go this way or this way negative two negative one zero one two three so on and so forth for all of infinity to infinity and beyond Sorry, I'll get out of the way. I'll let you write that down if you need to. Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, tw
Z for integers. Yep, we usually classify Z as in, Z is the letter that we usually say for integers, which is kind of weird, but sometimes we like to, I like to think of it as like a mascot for the numbers. <laughs> Number mascot. All right, let's talk about a different type of number now. Oh, my contacts kind of moved. All right, so the next number I want to talk about is our rational numbers. So, so rational. Does anyone know what a rational number is? It's not all numbers. That's a that's, I'm glad we're talking about this. Ooh, buddy, it's not just decimals. Decimals, I wouldn't quite say that. We'll see why. That's okay not to know. <gasps> yes, rational equals ratio. Yes, yes, that's a beautiful way of saying it. I love that. That's so precise, too. That's using very little words. I love it. It's literally any number yeah that's great minds think alike someone just wrote the same exact thing i was gonna say and beautiful minds think differently because we all are needed to make the world more interesting all right so oh, hair in my mouth great and a rational number is any number that can be written with a fraction and so that doesn't include all decimals. We'll talk about that. Thank you for the finger holds. Um, so here is what that is. We are doing rational numbers. Rational. It's any number that can be written as a fraction. So I'm gonna write can be fraction. And we're going to talk more about this. This this, and irrational numbers are what I want to spend the most time talking about today, okay? So I'll give you a moment if you want to write that down. Rational numbers can be a fraction. So that actually includes almost all of the numbers we've talked about so far. It, however, does not include zero. Because zero can't be written. Well, can it? Yeah, it actually can. I'm a liar. I'm a liar. Oh, gosh. I was thinking of something else. My bad. So it can be written as a fraction. If it can be written as a fraction, it is a rational number, which includes some decimals, but weirdly enough, not most of them. Oh, you just got a present like notebook and it's going in there. That's delightful and makes my heart so happy. All right. So here's some examples. Some examples are like I could write the number one as a fraction, right? I could write it as one over one or I could write it as two over two, right? Those are fractions. I can write any integer as a fraction, which is really cool. Um, honestly, I could write it as a fraction by just adding a one underneath it, which is super neat. Um, and then some other ones though that count as fractions is like, I can write one third. One third is a fraction and I really wanna bring that up. Um, anything that can be written as a fraction because one third is a decimal some of us might know this, and it's okay if you don't, is 0 0.3333333. Three, 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 three. Oh my gosh, the threes will just keep going. They'll go on forever and ever. One third is three, 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 repeating and repeating and repeating. Yes, that number can also count any number that can be written as a fraction. But this one counts even though it goes on forever as a decimal. Okay? 
which is kind of weird. It's kind of weird, but that works. Some numbers that go on forever can be written as fractions. And that's the main thing we're going to talk about today, okay? <coughs> mm. Thank you for the roses. Because we're now going to talk about irrational numbers. Those are where things get weird. And if you know me, you know I like it when math gets weird. All right? So we're going to talk about irrational numbers. And then we're going to write these out a little differently, just as a flow charty thing, because that might help your brains a bit. And then we're going to dive deeper into the differences between irrational and rational numbers, okay? Yeah, irrational is like pi. That's a beautiful example, and we'll bring up why that's an irrational number. I love it. All right. Oh my gosh, I'm running out of root on my board. We'll do our best. Irrational. I think it has two R's. Does irrational have two R's? Can someone help me out here? The spelling is not my favorite. Oh, nope, not all numbers are irrational. Okay, two R's, great. We'll talk about that. But weirdly enough, the majority of numbers are irrational. Isn't that weird? We'll talk about why. So irrational numbers. I want you guys, for a moment, we're going to take a moment. We're going to contextualize the word. Contextualize it, all right? So take a moment with me, all right? We're all picturing this. We're all imagining. Imagine the most irrational person you know. Imagine them. Get them in your brain. Imagine the most irrational person you have ever met in your entire life, okay? Take a moment. Imagine them with me. I know who I have in my brain. All right, do you have them? Great. So here's what you're going to do. They, I love that people are picking people from the show. That's great. Um, do they make much sense? Do they, they kind of act out and we can't always predict what they're going to do. They're probably really, really unpredictable. Irrational people are often very unpredictable. You don't know what they're going to say next. You don't know what they're going to do next. It's so irrational, right? They're not making good decisions. It's all over the place all the time, right? You can't predict it. There's no pattern to their behavior. They're just blah everywhere. So yeah, I wouldn't say Bakugo. He's pretty predictable. But when someone is unpredictable, it's pretty irrational. My dad. We don't have time to unpack all of that. <laughs> but yeah, it's irrational. Like, we can't predict what they're going to do. That's irrational. And that's irrational numbers. We, they, irrational numbers are numbers that go on forever and ever and ever. It's a decimal. So it's not like any of these numbers we've talked about before. Irrationals are totally separate. They're unlike the others. One of these things is not like the others. And it's irrational numbers, okay? They're not like the others. They just go on. They're a decimal that goes on and on and on and on and on and on and on. Like pi, nice job, forever. And we can't predict where they're going to go. They have no pattern. Okay, no pattern. No, not like 333 three, three repeating. I'm glad you brought that up, which is why I brought that up for a rational number. Because I know what's going to happen. I know that 333333333 forever and ever and ever is always going to be a 3. It's always going to be a 3. And because it's always a 3, I can predict it. So it's not irrational, it's rational. Irrational numbers never repeat. They have no pattern, right? So that's why, like, there's those contests for pi where it's, like, who can say the most decimals because there's no pattern. You just have to blunt remember them, right? That's what irrational means is there's no pattern. So honestly, we could sit here all day and think of examples, but let's, let's start to write some down. So we've got pi. goes on and on and on 
without it. And I'm sure you guys could actually sit down for a moment and think of your own irrational number, right? And I would encourage you to try that. Just just put yourself a zero, a decimal point, and start writing out random numbers. Random numbers. E, yes, E is irrational. Beautiful. There's so many irrational numbers. So like one, five, seven, nine, one, one, two, three, on and on and on. If I just if I just kept writing down any number that came to my brain, that would be an irrational number. A irrational number, because we can't predict it, cannot be written as a fraction. There are decimals that go on and on forever that I can write as a fraction, which is weird, but I can. And it's because I can predict them. Things with a pattern can be written as a fraction. Things with no pattern can't. Yeah, like square root of two. Beautiful job. So this difference is kind of the hardest one. And that's what we're going to talk about today. Because getting that difference down is really important for a lot of math, okay? And it's really important when we start talking about what we can do with numbers. Which is what we're going to be traveling... uh, What we're going to be doing in this algebra course. Like I said, if you missed the beginning of this, is we're diving in to a full algebra course now, okay? And you are in the very first lesson of that. And I'm going to be uploading these to YouTube for you to watch later. If you ban algebra, you might as well throw away your phone, honey, because you can't do nothing without that. Honestly, the amount of times I've used algebra in my everyday life as an adult, not just a math teacher, is very, very high. And all honestly, most adults do. They just don't realize they're doing algebra. We like to think of math as this weird thing we never use because we don't always see the applications, which is more of a problem in how it's taught. But it's so applicable. Yes, I do have a YouTube. It is in my link in my bio. Or honestly, you can just Google Thistle Witch and it's the it's the it's the YouTube channel that comes up. Yay! No, irrational numbers never become rational. Yeah, that's why we're taking time to talk about this today, because there's so many misconceptions around it, right? And it's kind of confusing. And that's okay. That just means we got to talk about it. It just means we got to take time to learn about it. So I'm going to erase the board. And then we're going to, um, we're going to talk some more about irrational versus rational. Does that sound good? Oh, the difference between natural and whole? It's just zero. Whole has zero, natural doesn't. Because I won't naturally try and count nothing. That's how I remember it. Okay, yes, 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 yes. I will I will move, I will let you write, and then and then I will erase and we can keep going. I'm gonna use this time as a water break. Water break. Oh, Crow, if anyone's spamming the chat, feel free to just block them. Block them without even thinking about it. I trust you. Any questionable behavior that's making it harder for others to learn, you don't need to be here, and you don't need to see my content. Because what we're not tolerating here is we're not tolerating anyone making it harder for anyone else to learn. That's not what we're doing. All right, we ready to go, my dears? Let's do this. Let's do this. I want to give you, I forgot I wanted to write out one way of doing this, just as a memory tool. 
and then we're going to talk more about the difference, okay? Excellent. Ugh. I mean, people have been banned. Excellent. Ugh. It's kind of like when I have students who aren't ready to come to class and people will be like, oh, they're hiding out in the bathroom and stuff. I'm like, okay, I'm going to put my energy towards who's here because you're ready to learn and you're ready to go. And you know what? When they're ready, I'm happy to have them. But if they're not ready yet, they can take that time. Everything's better with sound effects and music. Anyways. Also, can we just say, like, bless Crow's heart, they're at work and they're still modding for us. Like, thank you, Crow, you beautiful soul. Oh, thank you. I'm glad you guys like my jacket. <laughs> All right, here's a tool that might help you remember these, okay? Let's get this. Yeah. All right. So I'm going to make a big box. This is my box. You may have seen this in a class before. All right, let's say that all numbers that have ever existed fit inside this box, okay? All numbers that have ever existed exist in the box. That's a pretty cool box. We're just imagining. <laughs> all right, so. There are different categories in this box. These are going to be my rational numbers. All of my rational numbers fit inside this box bubble. Right? We're just pretending. The box is all numbers that have ever existed. Maybe you've wanted to put all numbers that have ever existed in a box before and pack it up and send it away. But it's okay. We're picturing this. And then there are rational numbers. They're right there. And inside those rational numbers are going to be my integers. Cool. And then inside, because not all integers are rational numbers, right? Not all, I mean, sorry, restate, restate, rewind. Not all rational numbers are integers, right? There are some that are outside of that, but all integers are irrational numbers. They fit inside that box. And if this doesn't make sense to you, that's okay. But maybe to some people, this makes more sense. So that's why we're showing it, okay? So don't panic on me. The only thing we're not doing here is we're not panicking. We only panic at the disco. All right, and then inside integers, inside integers, um, I can have, wait, let me think for a moment. Yeah. Inside my integers, I have my whole numbers. Right? And inside my whole numbers, I have my natural numbers. I ran out of room, so I'm just going to write an N for natural. But outside of my rational numbers, I have my irrational numbers, which is the really important part here. My irrational numbers don't overlap with my rational numbers ever. There are so many numbers. And then someone brought up imaginary numbers. You might notice that there's still box open. Imaginary numbers go outside of all of that.
But we're not going to spend much time talking about imaginary numbers today, so don't really worry about that. There are infinitely many numbers. So yeah, you are right. There are too many numbers to count. Good thing we don't need to. Yes, irrational numbers do not have a pattern. They cannot be written as a fraction. Good question. Yeah, don't let imaginary numbers confuse you for no reason. Uh, we'll talk about, ima there are imaginary numbers. They're, they're actually quite simple. They're actually quite simple. And where they get used, it's just a word that we use to talk about the numbers. So don't panic on that guy. Um, they're just, they make, they make certain things work better. And they also get used in electrical engineering. So they have very real real applications to them don't worry about it they are they are quite simple you're like you're the math teacher oh you think it's simple right they really are i think we put too much pressure on them um because honestly like if you're so worked up about imaginary numbers you're it it's just it's literally one rule it's not that bad it's not that intense we like to treat it like it's intense but it's not. I've said this before. I'll say it again. I'll say it till I'm blue in the face. Hard math is just easy math stacked upon each other's shoulders, wearing a trench coat, trying to get into an R-rated movie. Basically, it's just that we see a lot of things together and we panic and think it's a lot bigger and harder than it is when really it's just cut up easy stuff we already know. So if we learn to cut it up, it's, it's not that bad. It's not that bad. All right, so let's go. And also, we're not talking about ourselves like that. Just because it takes you longer to learn something, you're not going to talk about it like that. Because if you're going to call yourself dumb for not being able to get stuff at the same speed as some other people, well, then you're calling me dumb. Did you know that? You're calling me dumb because I'm dyslexic. And I really struggle with writing and... Honestly, you guys have seen me struggle, and I'm glad that you guys can see me struggle, because that's okay. It's okay that I need a little help. It's okay that I don't always get it right the first time, and it's okay that it takes me a little longer to think about it, because that's just our brains. I have other stuff I'm good at, and that's good, but I don't have to be good at everything. That doesn't mean, though, that I give up on spelling things correctly. That doesn't mean that I give up on words. It doesn't mean that I give up on trying, right? I just have to find my own way to work with it. I just have to accept that it's going to be in my own time. But we're not giving up on things. and We're not calling ourselves dumb just because our brain doesn't work like the next person's. Imagine how boring this world would be if our brains worked like the next person's. Yes, adapt, overcome, survive. I believe in you, and you should too. Okay? It's going to be okay. You don't have to get it today. You don't have to get it tomorrow. But what I hope is that you never give up on trying. Okay? That's the only thing I can ever ask from you. And that's the only thing you can ever ask from yourself. And if you do that, I'm really, really proud of you. Okay? Okay, let's talk a little bit more about irrational versus rational numbers. And then the next time we have a live, we're going to play around with those numbers, okay? So I'm sorry that we didn't actually get to any computing stuff today because, you know, time. But this is a really good basis um, for us working forward, okay? Today was really just making a base for the rest of this course that we're going to be taking together. All right. So... I'm going to erase this again, so I just have more time, room to work, and we're going to talk about irrational versus rational. Maybe we'll do a couple of things as examples. Burp, 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 burp. I don't know where my actual eraser for this went. I can be honest about that. Also, it looks like I need new white 40 markers. I should get those. <sighs> Uh, 
All right, we'll try a different marker. Maybe this one works better. Yeah, that one works better. All right, cool. <laughs> I'm sitting on the floor doing this, by the way. <laughs> All right, so let's talk about some rational numbers. And I'm also going to have irrational up here because we're going to be comparing and contrasting. So as we talked about before, irrational numbers are things like pi. They don't repeat. They just keep going. So the main things that are important about an irrational number is it's a repeating. I mean, not repeating. It is a decimal. And there is no pattern. If you have those two things, you got yourself an irrational number, baby. If you have a decimal that does not repeat, no pattern, no pattern, you got an irrational number. But, I'm going to move to this side. If you have something that can be written as a fraction, right? It can be written as a fraction. Right? So it could have a decimal. It could. It doesn't need to. It could have a decimal. So it can be written as a fraction. It could have a decimal. And if it has a decimal, if it has a decimal, it has a pattern. So decimal has a pattern. So the big things we're looking for here is if we see a number with a decimal, if we see a decimal, does it have a pattern or does it not have a pattern? Those are our questions. That's what we need to ask ourselves. Does it have a pattern or does it not have a pattern? Most numbers fit into rational or irrational. The only time they're going to fit into they're not is if they're imaginary, which is very rarely going to happen. Yes, like one, 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 one. That boy would be rational. So yeah, pi is irrational. You know what? I think I want to, for these last couple minutes, we're going to play a game where it's going to be, is that number rational or irrational? Oh, you guys are sweeties. <laughs> All right, so I'm actually going to in red. Um, I'm going to in red... Can you guys see the bottom here? It's kind of there are words. Bring it down a little. There we go. We'll bring it down a little. So I still have my definitions. Sorry, my ring light is giving some reflection. I am going to write a number. And you all are going to guess if that number is rational or irrational, okay? That's what we're going to do. It's not a quiz, it's a game, because there's no, it's going to be okay if you get it wrong. We're just going to guess. We're just going to have fun with it, okay? Okay. Yeah. Don't think of it like a test. We're just having fun. There are no consequences if you don't get it right. And honestly, guessing and getting it wrong is going to help your brain remember the right answer than if you did nothing, okay? You got this. I believe in you. Let's play. All right. First one coming in strong. We'll do 0 0.333. This line above it means that the three repeats forever and ever. Is that boy rational or irrational? Rational or irrational? Put your guesses in. Da -na 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 -na. <laughs>
Oh, you guys are all... I love that there are question marks. I actually love that. I love that because that means, like, you are unsure, but you put it out there anyways. And I'm proud of you for that. Beautiful, 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 my dears. You are... If you said rational... Ding, ding, ding. You are correct. It is rational. It has a decimal, but the decimal has a pattern. If I know what it's going to be, three, 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 that pattern of three repeating is a pattern. So this boy is rational. Rational. Sick. All right, let's try another one. Yes, that could be written as one third. Beautiful. And since I can write that boy as a fraction, it's that's another way of saying it's rational. Let's go. Yeah. All right. Another one. Another one. Another one. All right, let's do And that goes on and on forever, okay? Is that rational or irrational? Put in your best guess. It goes 0.45454545455 and that's going to repeat forever, okay? I love how many, I love that I'm not getting all the same answer. And now that might seem weird because you're like, well, that means some people are wrong, but it also tells me everyone's trying and that makes me very happy. And that also means we get to clear up some misconceptions. All right. So my people who said irrational, I, I see why you think that I really do, but this boy is also rational. So if you said rational, nice job. <laughs> Way to go. This boy is rational because I have that pattern of four, five, four, five, four, five, four, five. Okay. That boy is going to be rational. And weirdly enough, we won't get into it today, but weirdly enough, I could write that as a fraction. Okay. You don't really need to know how, but you could. But yeah, that is rational because I could predict where that's going. Because I can predict it, because it has that pattern, it is rational. Excellent. All right, let's try another one. But yeah, I can see why you think it's irrational. But nope, that boy's going to be rational. Whenever you see that pattern repeating, that is rational. All right, let's, let's go with this. I'm going to do... And then I'm going to do dot, 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 okay? So the numbers keep going, but that's what I'm going to show you of it. Do you think that is rational or irrational? Take your best guesses. Rational or irrational? You are all so smart and so beautiful. That is irrational, baby. Let's go. Nice. That is irrational. It's not how you thought it was pie for a second. I can see why. Um, This is going, it has no pattern. I see no pattern happening here, right? No pattern going on forever. Irrational. You did. <laughs> All right, let's do another, 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 another. Yeah. All right. Um. Let's try this boy. Rational or irrational? And 
And some of you know what the number is. Nice. Excellent. This is pi. These are also all the digits I know of pi. I don't know many digits of pi. I honestly only know 3.14159 because um, in science, that's typically where you will round pi to um, with your decimal places. Um, so success. This boy is irrational. There is no pattern here. There's no pattern so, bam, it's irrational. I can't predict what's going to happen next. All right, let's do another one. Let's do another one. Python. <laughs> you guys are on a roll. You're doing great.